Hi everyone, Dr. Sylvester here. Let's talk about how the form of your bandage will affect its function. When we apply a bandage to one of our small animal patients, we are typically applying a bandage to help the patient with an orthopedic problem or maybe with a wound. These are two very different types of bandages and their functions are very different. Now, we may need to have one bandage for both. I get that, a fracture that has a big wound on it. We're gonna blend our bandages. The orthopedic bandage needs to offer support and maybe even immobilization. The wound management bandage, on the other hand, needs to keep the wound clean, needs to protect the wound from the environment, needs to absorb, exudate. When we apply a bandage, we always use the same layers and we apply them in the same order. What makes the difference is how we use the layers. So with the orthopedic bandage, we may not have a wound, we may not even have an incision, so we may not always need a contact layer. With the wound management bandage, contact layer is everything. Are we using a contact layer that's just going to offer some antibiotics? Are we using a contact layer that's going to help debride, like maybe a wet to dry sort of bandage? What type of contact layer are we using in this particular wound? Everybody has their personal preferences. But what's the function of the contact layer? In the orthopedic bandage, we want support, maybe even immobilization. To offer support, we need to create a bandage that has a lot of, of oomph, a lot of form, firmness, structure, so that it can support that dog's limb. We may need to put a splint in there in order to totally immobilize motion uh, between two joints, but we're still going to need to have a lot of padding or at least a sufficient amount of padding with a fair bit of compression in order to create a bandage that holds itself well. And how we apply the layers will also help the bandage hold up, stay above the knee, maybe stay above the elbow. So with an orthopedic bandage, if your stirrups are holding up the bandage, odds are your bandage isn't functioning very well, right? Because it can't even support itself without sliding down, so it's not going to be supporting the limb. So for the orthopedic bandage, firm, structure, Form is everything. Now, in the wound management bandage, you may or may not need to offer a lot of support. Probably in the early stages, absolutely. You're going to want a decent amount of padding over your good contact layer in order to maybe prevent motion of some skin flaps that might be dangling. You want them to adhere back down. And even if they're not dangling, you want to help close the dead space between, you know, the skin and the underlying tissues. And in the early stages, there's likely to be inflammation as well. So that padding is going to help. The padding with the compression on it is going to help hold everything in place and help bring the swelling down. Now, it doesn't have to be so firm that it's going to immobilize the limb and offer a lot of support, but you want a certain amount of firmness there. If you have a real exudative wound, lots of gunk coming out of the wound, then you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit more padding there too to help absorb all that gunk. You may not need to compress it as much as you would in the orthopedic bandage to give it that form. As we move on in the wound healing process, you may not need to have any exudate absorbed, your contact layer is now going to be probably a lot simpler because you've got nice granulation bed, it's a clean wound, you're just waiting for the contraction and epithelialization to occur so you can abandon the bandage altogether. So maybe you just want a little non-adherent contact layer and a little bit of something to cover the wound to protect it from the environment, maybe even protect 
the environment, you know, the owner's white couch from the wound itself, if there's a little bit of oozing, but that's all your bandage really needs to do. So if you're using methods to hold your bandage in place, well, that's just fine because your bandage just needs to cover the wound and protect it. Its function is just that simple. So your bandage can be that simple. I hope this really explains the differences between an orthopedic bandage and a wound management bandage and how you're going to apply them. Two more bandages to consider is a bandage can also be used to control hemorrhage, so a pressure bandage. When you use a pressure bandage, the whole idea is to compress the blood vessels. So you're going to want a much smaller amount of cast padding and you're going to want your compression to kind of compress the tissues within the limb. Now you got to be really careful with a pressure bandage. If you're doing a lot of compression, you may want to remove it after several minutes, 15, 20 minutes, depending on how much you've compressed, right? Uh, never leave a pressure bandage on for very long and never leave it unmonitored and in the hands of an inexperienced person to keep an eye on things. The other kind of, well, it falls in the bandage category. I don't really consider it a bandage. I give them their own category and that's the slings. A sling is bandaging material applied to a limb to prevent the pet from weight bearing on that limb. And that's all it's doing. It's preventing weight bearing. So a Velpo sling, an Emer sling, a 9090 bandage, a Robinson's, uh, you know, a carpal bandage. These are forms of slings and their sole purpose is to prevent the use of the limb for a period of time. And that period of time should always be pretty short, never more than 14 days. To me, 10 is kind of my max. I'm going to encourage you to watch the videos I have on how to apply some of these different types of slings in case you need them. Thank you for paying attention. Let's go create some great bandages for our patients now.